Okay, call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the June 16th meeting. No, what, what's the date today? 13. 13. 13. 13. Um, meeting of the um, Police Station Building Committee. Um, we'll get right to business. Um, to have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 16th meeting. Make a motion we accept the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? If being none, all those. Um, Wow, a lot of sequence. Sorry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Okay. Um, now, do you want to review the um, the bills now or do you want to hold? Sure. Okay. Um, present the following bills for uh, processing Fontaine Brothers application number 13, the amount of $1,824,485. Allied Testing Laboratories. Invoice number 24277, the amount of $515. Construction Monitoring Services, invoice number SPMC <coughs> number 18, $60,000. Tecton Architects, invoice number 45106, $47,187. Collier's invoices number 753463, in the amount of $1,810 and number 760139 in the amount of $1,390. Eagle Leasing Company, invoice number R085714-1 for $585.41. Wally Computer Associates Incorporated, <coughs> invoice number E9086 in the amount of $23,100. Total is $1,959,072. And 41 cents. Okay. Can, will you remind me what Wally Computer is for? They were for the wireless um, access devices that will be mounted in the new station. Oh, okay. I couldn't, I couldn't remember what they were for. Okay. So, any questions? Any other questions on that? Okay. Do you have a, a motion then? So, a motion that we pay the bill. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Okay, um, next we're going to hear the reports and review and act on the following matters. Um, we'll start with the owner's project manager's report. Yeah. Um, I apologize. I realized when I sat down that um, I did not send out the budget update in advance of the meeting, so we'll get it out to you uh, probably first thing in the morning. Uh, total expenses to date after payment of the above reference bills was $15,373,359 uh, to date. Any questions on budget or related matters? What's the percentage as it stands right now as a total? Um, of the total budget, one second, just to pull it up. 49.4% uh, of the whole project and 41.5% of just the building budget. Thank you. Okay. Anything else now? Uh, I'll leave the construction update to Matt. They'll do a better job than I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay, Matt. <coughs> All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, give a quick update on the construction. Um, so this is, uh, <coughs> construction's been moving along pretty good. If, if you've driven by the site, you'll, you'll notice that the envelope is, is starting to really take shape. Um, a lot of material going on the roof and around the fascias and, and edges, as well as the, the brick and finished material. Uh, even more has been going on inside the building, um, and we'll we'll get to that. Um, so this this was uh, this was from the uh, the ninth. This is Thursday. Most of these photos were from Thursday. Um, so this is just by the front entry. Um, typically, I try to get the full building so you can see where the front entry progress is. But uh, the ins the insulator was parked out front, so he was he was working right along, uh, getting the envelope buttoned up uh, on the side of the building and finishing their work. Um, <clears throat> around the stair tower just to the north, uh, which would finish the envelope. Moving around to the back, you can start to see what the building's gonna start to look like. Uh, this is the, the north elevation of the Sally Port. Um, the masonry is, is basically complete from here, from uh, along this section of the building. Um, 
the rib brick detailing, the precast base, and, and the uh, <coughs> corbelled parapet walls are, are pretty much complete. They've they just washed this brick down, um, and uh, a week or so later, it's the, there's no efflorescence efflorescence or anything like that so it's a it's a really good quality installation we're very happy with the masonry on this project um, working our way around the building this is just outside of the fitness room um, it's been staged up for quite a while um, they've been waiting for some of the roofing roof detailing around where the roof uh, extends up at the fitness area um, in order to finish the brickwork so you can see that the precast has been installed around the curtain wall for that large window that's there and, and the masons were going around um, laying the rest of the brick. They've, they've now gone up to the, the, the window head there. So this is, um, they're rapidly closing in this section of the building. <clears throat> uh, working our way around um, to the uh, west edge of, of the elevation. This is around the garages. Um, uh, this, this scaffolding is actually down as of uh, just the other day. I think today or, or Friday <coughs> they took it down. So um, they were just finishing washing that brick down as well. So um, it's looking really nice. Um, and then around to Maple Ave along the south elevation, um, they've been working the brick around on that left side of the image there. Uh, another thing you'll notice um, right, right along this edge here is the, uh, the roofer was, had started to install the, the roof edge, the fascia and gutters. Um, they've, they've worked that around this entire elevation now and once that's complete they can start laying the shingles down um, as well. So that's sort of the last step before they can put their last piece of drip edge in and, and get the roof edge done. Um, the parking canopy, um, if you've driven by it, you've seen the steel go up. If you drove by it today, you, you'll also notice that half of the metal decking has been installed as well. So they've got one more side of the metal decking to go, and then the roof finish can go on there as well. Um, what you see here is they're, they're forming up. They formed up for the uh, concrete encasement. So the first couple of feet of those um, con uh, steel columns we have en encased in concrete so that uh, nobody's banging cruiser doors into them and, and damaging the, the structure and protects it from plows and things like that. Um, those pours are scheduled for tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, they would have been poured while that picture was going on, but it was raining, so yeah. that got pushed a couple days. Moving inside the building, uh, this is from the vestibule looking into the lobby. We've shown you this, this view um, just about every month now, and you could sort of see through the entire building in, in months past, but now it's, it's pretty packed in with with stud work, um, a lot of the, the rough and mechanicals are, are ongoing. You can sort of see some conduit hanging, um, fire protection going in, and, and a lot of the duct work that's on the floor ready to be installed as well. Um, moving around from the training room um, towards the lobby, so this is looking towards uh, the clerk's uh, office. You can see some of the, the transom windows over the conference rooms. The, the hollow metal frames are in for those, door frames are in. Um, and just a lot of the, the MEP roughens are, are continuing to, to move forward through here as well. Um, turning around and moving down into the training room, um, you can see some of the progress going on in here, just a little bit of the mechanical rough-in that, that's happening here. This is sort of the last space to get finished out, so this one's going to sort of trickle while other ones are going to fly. <clears throat> uh, moving into the back of the building, um, this is in the, uh, the men's locker room. Uh, they had just put the first couple of courses in last month when we were, when we were meeting. Um, and then the Masons moved outside to progress the brick, but uh, a couple of rainy days, so they, they moved back in and, and started finishing up these locker rooms. Uh, all, all the plumbing's been roughed in. Um, this, is, this is pretty much um, ready to go and, and start accepting uh, finishes here pretty shortly. Uh, in the cell area, this is the booking station, so they're starting to finish the masonry in here as well, some of the interior um, block work, um, running, again, the mechanicals uh, through, through some of the spaces. Um, into the detention area, so this is the male cell block. You can see the, the, deten the detention hollow metal frames have been installed. Um, they're just putting up some masonry partitions that are going to sort of block in the personal property lockers that are they're going to be going into those spaces as well. Um, Moving back towards the staff entry, so this is coming in from the secure parking lot. Um, this is sort of where all the officers would be would be entering the building. So uh, drywall uh, has been ongoing for a couple of weeks now in this area. Um, this is the roll call space. So um, the exterior wall here, you can see the drywall is finished. You can see all the, the, the mechanicals that are going to be going above the ceiling. Um, on the left side of the image, uh, 
that's over towards the lieutenant's office. You can see that that sort of black material that's that's over the studs. That's a, that's sort of a, a sound and acoustic matting that goes on the outside of the stud to help increase the uh, the sound transmission coefficient from the spaces. So it instead of just being a normal stud wall with insulation, we've added that extra layer here to boost the wall's performance. That'll go on both sides. Yep, that goes on both sides, and then insulation in, in the middle as well. <clears throat> um, which you can see on the right side of the image, some of the mineral wool insulation that's 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 going in there, um, as well. This is the report writing room. A um, uh, lot of uh, electrical and, and data conduit that are going down to those workstations um, and, and blocking on the walls. We have upper upper cabinetry. We've got open <coughs> countertops. You can see the uh, the counter supports there that are that are just kind of sticking into the room here. Those are, those are actually built into the wall, so you don't have those, those big supports sticking underneath that you whack your knees under. Um, so those are concealed counter support brackets. Um, taking a step back, this is the patrol sergeants. Um, again, you can see all the, all the mechanical rough-ins over the ceiling, condensate piping, duct work, um, and that sound liner material, and then the drywall just above the ceiling plane so far has been finished in there. And further around the room now, as of today, this, this room is pretty much fully sheetrocked as well. Um, any questions on the construction update? Any of the images here? Have you had any, um, this is about the stage of a building where security might become an issue, albeit a pretty ridiculous thing to do, you got caught but have you had any we have no we haven't had any issues on this site <coughs> thankfully yet so i hopefully the proximity to the <laughs> existing police station will deter um any of that but um we have been putting temporary doors on most of the openings i think the only large opening that doesn't have a door on it now is the front entrance and the two stairwells so once those are secured, we'll get temporary doors on there just to deter anybody from looking around. Yeah, but raw material attraction. Yeah, nothing like that, luckily. I think the proximity helps. Thank you. Any other questions on the... All right. You know, can I just make a comment? When you... <clears throat> you, can, you can see it in, in the picture what, how high those the floor to ceiling is and what's up above what will be the, <laughs> the finished ceiling it's a good example of why we couldn't use the old police station to try to renovate it because the stuff that we needed to put in there would never fit above there that was that was a big part of the problem and that's not even showing all the mechanicals in there yet correct and, and this is sort of the, <coughs> the end of the line of the building too so it, it sort of gets more full as you move your way right. into the, there's a lot more up there yeah but it's a it's a great point and it's a common misconception that we can just put a couple of pipes in the in the ceiling and yeah, make right. everything work but there's there's quite a bit that, that goes into one of these facilities um, I just wanted to touch briefly on an update on the second exit drive. I know it's not in the agenda, but I did want to just touch on it um, because we have made some progress there. Um, I just brought this image up just to just to remind everybody where we sort of started off with the site plan um, last year. Um, hasn't really changed much. Um, we still have the the sort of the couple of plazas down here along Maple Ave, the Grove. The only thing we've changed here was we've we've added another walk and in, in some of the the trees on, on either side, but. Um, I just wanted to just bring that up one more one more time as we look to the adding of the uh, the second drive up to the back here. So um, we've seen the plans. We haven't we haven't made any modifications to them since the last time we presented it here. But we have put together our, our construction document set. Um, a couple of sheets here highlighted um, with some some of the alternate drive detailing that's go, going into it. Um, June 2nd, we submitted our plans to the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission. Um, we've been working pretty closely with, with Bernie and, and Andy Truman on, on that effort. Uh, we did get a notice that the Conservation Commission has confirmed that since we're outside of the buffer, um, that a filing is not going to be required with them. So that sort of closes the issue with, with them. Um, and we are scheduled uh, to be heard by the Planning Board on July 14th. So we expect that to be pretty straightforward. Um, so look, we look forward to that hearing uh, next month. Yes. Um, just because of the previous picture, where both driveways are, 
Yep. Of, will the landscaping be back far enough so that cars coming out of there have a clear view of any pedestrians? Because in the previous picture, it looked like it. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. See how it, it's, I, I just think that it's, it's really important to be sure they have a really clear view of the sidewalk and, and who's on it. Yep. Because it is a busy sidewalk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, these are these are the existing trees that are here in, in this area. And you can see when you go there that the the canopy are the canopy is pretty pretty high and, and wide open. So there's there's really good visi visibility. So, to, so the ones there. on the left, are those existing trees too? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, any other questions? Yep. Okay. That's it. That's all I have. Okay. All right. right. Um, so just a brief update um, on the outside. Uh, Matt obviously showed the brick progress. Um, as of tomorrow, we'll have all of the precast that goes around the base of the walls. That'll be substantially complete at that point. All my mason will have to do outside of um, brick veneer is the precast around the picture frames and then the cap along the top of the single story at the parapet. Um, so it's good to see portions of trades work getting complete. Um, now that we're progressing around the front where there's a bunch of windows um, with the masonry, um, my, the window material is going to be delivered in a semi-trailer to the site next week and we're going to start the installation. The um, last week of June, which is a great milestone to see. So we've been working with uh, Neil and his team over at CMS to get all of our window testing and everything lined up to make sure we have good quality control on the installation once we get that uh, up and going full speed um, into early July. Uh, around the exterior, Matt had also mentioned that the, um, the uh, fascia and gutters were going on. If you drive by this afternoon, you can also see some of the shingles going on. So it looks like progress hasn't has been slow in that area now, but it's kind of a two step process as they have a smaller crew doing the detail work on the edge and they'll bring in larger crews to do um, the shingles. So I'd imagine the next week or two, you'll see a majority of that roof on the south side uh, be fully shingled. So that will kind of be the uh, finished look as you uh, as you see on the roof there with the fascia and the white, and we'll see more of that white come out when we get the uh, metal panels on the south stair entrance, as well as the main front entrance. Um, going on the inside, there's been a lot of progress on the interior uh, MEP roughens. Our focus has been getting all of our in-wall inspections. So we've had the building inspector, plumbing inspector, and electrical inspector through multiple times a week for the past month or so. Tomorrow, we're going to be getting our last in-wall inspection uh, for electrical um, in the main lobby. Um, so at that point, there's uh, my electrician will be upstairs with the rest of the MEP trades um, doing in-wall roughing. So that's kind of our key point to get drywall in the um, sound uh, matting, the um, acoustical matting on the walls is to have all of our inspections done by the um, authorities having jurisdiction and make sure that they see all the work as it goes in and make sure it's being done correctly. Um, as Matt mentioned, the uh, taper is going through the building um, following the drywall. We also have uh, the, uh, the painter on site now a couple days a week for the past couple weeks ago and then he was on site several days last week working in the uh, CMU areas getting that painting prepped. Um, as Matt mentioned, we're getting close on the interior CMU in the locker room. Um, so we'll get that primed and have uh, hopefully ceramic tile going on the walls there probably early July, just after the 4th of July. That'll open up the next phase of work for my plumber um, and other finishes to get uh, to get the all the toilets and sinks and the finishes in those areas and start getting areas completed. Um, so as we go into the fall, we can get flooring, locker, um, all of those lockers, all of those items into the building. Um, looking ahead, we've had our locker subcontractor was out on site last week uh, verifying openings, making sure that all the framing was put in the right position so when they get on site, the, uh, their material will fit, um, as well as my mill worker is going to be on site tomorrow to start their first field verifying so that they can get all their fabrication moving forward. So as soon as we get uh, the uh, drywall areas and primer, um, they, we, they can get the millwork installation started. 
um, as well as all of the window returns and the chair rail that's around a lot of the portions of the building. Um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of moving pieces. Uh, hope for the next committee update that we'll have paint going full speed on the ground floor and we'll be pretty well through drywall on the second floor and closing, closing out the brick on the uh, exterior facade. So a lot of moving parts at this time and just hoping for a nice dry, warm summer. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, a couple of questions. End of the month committee take a tour through there end of June yeah we talked about June or July, July. yeah I, I'm not sure if we were thinking after the 4th of July we're that, thinking, we, should we tag it on to our July meeting we could do that um, whatever really works just as long as when, when I was talking when I was talking and I don't want to play it on Steve but yep. <coughs> he's we always like, do when he no he he said right now wouldn't be good because downstairs is too much well we wouldn't go in the middle of the day but yeah a lot going on so when they move upstairs that would be a safer environment to go probably the end of the month and yeah the, I, I know think some of the members are chomping at the bits to get in there so I'd yeah. rather do it before what of July if we could do it if it's possible. Yeah, that would be anything is possible. Um, it, whatever works for the group. I, the later, you know, if we do the week before the committee um, meeting on the sixteenth of July. No, that's July. I wanted to do yeah, it before so, the fourth of July. So like, yeah, I mean, we I could do, do it the thirtieth. Yeah, we could do it that week if the committee wants to do that. That's not a problem. Pro best time at the end of the day. Yeah, the end of the day is the best time, and we could do it. 3.30 or 4 o'clock, whatever works for the group. I know some people have work commitments, so we could, or 4.30, we can make whatever. So who will we work that out with? Um, it'd probably be myself and Kristen, and then I'll just let Steve know, and we can make sure it works for everybody. Okay. That really good. All right. Is that okay? All right. Um, a couple other questions. Back stairs. Interior. Yep. Interior stairs. That other set of stairs, we're... Uh, there's some moving pieces around it, but those will be uh, getting installed this week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and um, not that it makes that much of a difference to us, but how soon before are you going to have some base paving down out there in, in the back lot? And maybe. So uh, Amarillo is going to be back on site next week with uh, the. Um, the canopy coming to completion. Yeah. There's a lot of underground conduits running from there right. and around. So they're going to be uh, on site with uh, Griffin doing underground conduits. So that's really the big push that they have to get that site into binder. So we'll, we'll likely do the binder in two steps. The first being the back parking lot, back entrance area. The second one being the front lot, just with how the work is sequencing yeah. with, uh, with the mason and everything ending on the east elevation there. So that'll probably be It'll probably be the middle of the end of July for Binder. That long, really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, just with with the all, there's a lot of conduits that go out there, and then they just have some miscellaneous stuff. That's all for the lighting so. stuff outside, right? Yeah, lighting, access um, control, access control for the gates. You have uh, <coughs> charging stations. For charging stations. Um, there's a bunch of stuff okay. out there. It's a mess of spaghetti wiring. I had just one other question. I'll open up the rest of the board. Um, what? What's left that um, has to be worded? Uh, the, Do we have POs? Out? We don't have POs out on everything yet, right? The demo is the primary item that has to be awarded of the existing police station. Okay. But what about the new station? The, the exercise equipment hasn't been ordered yet. That's furnishing stuff, so the, I'll save that for Neil I, or... Item, item five and six on your agenda. We're going to hit on a bunch of those. Okay, but all right. So on the on the building itself, on the construction side, there's everything's. Are, there's what, a couple. Of, there's a couple of small miscellaneous odds and ends? things. Yeah, just odds and ends. Like I through this last rec, I bought AED cabinets. I hadn't assigned those. So there's small, a couple of small things that I need to wrap up. But really, the main buyout that is left is the uh, demo. So I've just been working through that. Um, with uh, my group at in my office, um, as well as Fuss and O'Neill's hazmat, to make sure we have the uh, 
uh, abatement scope correct. So that's okay. been in process. Okay, so we're, we're pretty confident in the cost now, then? Yes. But, okay, questions from okay. other members? No, Donna, you must have a question. I have questions, but it's more Oh, okay, all right. The other stuff. Okay, anybody else? And I, I just want to say I can't wait to get in to see it because then I think a lot of things make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to get in yesterday. <laughs> Not that I know what I'm looking No, I, <laughs> I'd have an idea. No. Yeah, as the drywall goes up, it really identifies the room because it can be hard to tell. Like, you look at a bathroom, and you're like, this is tiny, but you can see through three rooms of studs. <laughs> so, like, as drywall goes up, it, it really, you get the final layout of how it all feels. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless you want to see all the wiring and stuff in it. Yeah. I, I know all about wiring. <laughs> It's EKG leads or something, maybe, but not. <laughs> I don't think they have those. Um, all right. So, anything? Anybody other questions on the construction schedule or anything? Mm. Okay. All right. So, then we're down to item five. So, Neil, is that you? You want me to start? To start? That's yeah. Okay. We so, we got a several FF&E items to to touch on. Um, the big one is going to be the furniture packages. Yep. So, I'm going to. I'm going to start with that, um, and I'm going to walk you through uh, a little bit of the process that we that we went through with the furniture packages. So, um, so we've been working on the furniture procurement since I think November of last year. So that, that's working with with myself, um, Neil, the chief, uh, a group of folks from the police department um, formed a little subgroup to work on the furniture selection. Um, and then two interior designers from my office, Shannon and, and Nicole. Um, so we reached out to several vendors that were local to the area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and last winter, they prepared some uh, preliminary um, packages and presentations to give the department sort of their their thoughts on, on what they have done in other police stations and, and what they um, felt was appropriate within the budget. and. Things like that. Uh, they we presented <coughs> those to the department themselves, to the department, and went through an initial selection process based on um, based on what we had received, um, and used that to sort of whittle ourselves down to two uh, furniture vendors, and we worked with those furniture vendors to develop detailed packages um, that we then used to to bid out the furniture packages themselves. So it was sort of. A larger group that was sort of working towards this ultimate goal, um, and as we as we narrow down these packages, furniture is a very um, like there's a durability component to it, and then there's also a touch and feel and comfort comfortability um, ergonomic component to it. So you kind of gotta you have to see these things, you have to touch them, you have to feel them to make sure that it's really what uh, is going to suit the needs of the department. So we did some showroom tours. Uh, we we. Uh, took uh, the department out to uh, AIS's showroom in Leominster, and we also went in to uh, Knoll's uh, showroom up in Boston in the Seaport District. Um, that was a good experience. We got to really get really good hands-on experience of seeing all the different options that were available. You know what makes a task chair a task chair. There's a lot of components that go into it, um, and then what worked well for you know workstations and conference tables and you know all the everything they needed in it functionality wise um, also had a bunch of t different types of task chairs brought to the department for them to try out um, it's kind of hard when you're you spend three minutes in a showroom just sitting in a chair like you're gonna live with this for the next 10 20 years so um, a bunch of them were, were brought to the department they could they could test them out see what they really liked and, and we were able to come down to all of that resulting into two final furniture packages that we assembled and put into a bid Contract A and Contract B, which we bid um, under Master General Law Chapter 30B uh, in April. So April 25th, we issued those packages to bid, and we received two bids, one for each package on May 9th. Um, contract A went to Sheehan's. Um, they're, they're, they're local out of, out of Worcester. Um, and their package included um, the executive office chairs and like the the admin offices, the chief's office, facility conference chairs, training room chairs, lateral files, metal metal shelving and storage rooms, um, 
office work tables, wardrobes, um, and then the open office workstations was sort of the biggest piece of it. And here's just, we forwarded you all the, 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 the two furniture packages. So this is just a snapshot from Sheehan's package showing the, the clerk's office with a floor plan for reference and, uh, and then the open office uh, workstations. Uh, the images aren't reflective of the finishes where the finished selection process happens after award. Um, so it's so it's sort of running just like a construction project now separately in a way. Um, and then contract B went to uh, strategic spaces um, and, and their bid value was 227,000. Um, their contract included soft seating, the task chairs, um, occasional chairs, which is sort of, we have like a side chair in an office um, or things like that. Uh, private office workstations, conference tables, tr the training room tables, uh, and uh, in the interview room tables as well. So this is just a snapshot of one of the one of the options that was looked at for the deputy chief's office. All the different components that go into it: um, their workstation, the the side chairs, uh, work table, the chairs accompanying that, and then all of their um, storage and uh, storage components off to the off to the side there as well. Um, so that, that got us to sort of today, where, where, we're, where we're at. So um, again, the, the two <coughs> packages, 380,000 for Sheehan's and 227,000 for strategic spaces, which is sort of right on where we wanted to be with our budget. Um, so um, they're gonna, the furniture vendors are gonna go through a similar submittal process, just like Ryan's team does for any of their materials, so they'll be Submittals that'll be that'll come to us um, that we'll review and approve and, and make comments on if they're not in, in alignment with the contracts. Um, the interior designer on our team that'll be Nicole, um, primarily working with furniture and Shannon working with the finishes. We'll continue working with the police department um, and the furniture vendors to select the final finishes that are going to be going on for each of these products, uh, each of these sections of the building. Um, that way we can make sure that it's in harmony with all the other finishes uh, as well. Um, so any changes that go on to the furniture package since we, since we did hard bid them um, will need to be modified through uh, a change order process similar to the construction contract. So if there are any, any ads or deletions <coughs> or changes to any of the furniture packages from here on out, it will result in a, in a change order to those contracts which we would then uh, bring to the committee for approval and review. And right now, furniture delivery is scheduled for the end of the year. They're targeting um, early December with their, with their deliveries. So um, that should align right after substantial completion. Um, and then we'll start moving things in if they need to shift back a month or shift um, back a couple of weeks, however that needs to, to, to occur. Um, with anything that happens in construction, we can, we can accommodate that. So that won't be an issue. A, a couple of questions. Yep. Sheehan's and strategic spaces are what? Distributors? Yeah, they're they're furniture reps, so they sort of they sort of oh, rep a number reps. of different furniture companies. But they don't have a showroom. Like Sheehan doesn't have a showroom. No. no. Okay. Um, <coughs> so did so the, the bid went out. It was spec by a brand. Then, I mean, it was that specific to a brand of a table or desk or. Yes. Okay, um, and then when you got down to like the chairs and stuff, did, did they actually spec out the, not the color, but the grade of the fabric that they wanted? Yes. Okay, so, so they know that they, would have, however they graded it, but if it was, if, if the more expensive, more durable one was grade E, they spec that, it, did, it wasn't bid as grade B. Right, yeah. So, so we're we, not going to have to worry about dealing with um, uh, it's going to cost you an extra 20 bucks a chair. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what you would get into with like more expensive finishes from where we are would be if you wanted to get into like a high end leather or something like that, which wouldn't be necessary, which wouldn't really be appropriate for this project. Yeah. So the, the durability is, is, a, is a high durable commercial type fabric for, for all, the, all the chairs. So is the reason we. I, I don't have a, a personally. I don't have a problem with with the one bid because I know the way furniture stuff goes. Because I I used to have to buy it. But is it because we were specific on the 
on the brand of, of furniture that we wanted? Uh, a number of factors went into the reason why we went through a bid process. Um, a lot of it just had to do with um, just procurement, Chapter 30B procurement law. And it, no, I, it, I understand, we but we wanted like a particular yeah, we, desk. We wanted Han. Yeah, right, yeah. And if we, we said Han, they had to bid Han, right? Uh, yeah, or they could they could they could submit a, a substitution, but we would we could review it and reject it if it didn't meet the needs of the department. Uh, they could. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm good. Um, Donna. Um, <clears throat> do you have? A, uh, we, I haven't seen a list. I don't think of like you got one stove, three refrigerators, we're one gonna, microwave. We're, Did we're you do that? that? We're getting there. It's, oh, we're gonna, I'm jumping the gun. One of the next ones. It's okay. Okay, so going back to the furniture <clears throat> then, because I was going there too. Um, how many, like when I just look quickly at the dispatch one, how many dispatch stations are there? Four. Four? Yeah. Is there room to put more dispatch stations in there when if they're needed in five, ten years? Can you add stations in there? Yes. And will they be able to get something that looks the same and fits in, like in other words, another piece of the puzzle? Is that something that will be able to happen or will they just get a little space? It's not, it's not as simple as just grabbing another piece of furniture and plopping it on, right? We have two, there's two offices that currently reside within <laughs> the, the dispatch center um, the dispatch supervisor's office can also act as a, as a backup dispatch position. And then the other office is sort of a future office. And, and that can sort of, you can sort of take the walls away really, really easily and expand the entire dispatch center to, to add more consoles. In the future, if you really needed to add a ton of consoles, you could also go to a smaller one. We're going with sort of the larger one that they offer. But the ability to add more dispatch um, stations workstations that's that's not really up to the discretion of of just the town and the police department state 911 sort of approves the number of, of stations <coughs> there are as well and it's based on call volume and, and number in and, and population and things like that so we wouldn't we would we we, na we made enough room for another another workstation to be sort of in the space but more than that we wouldn't anticipate that you would that you would really meet that that need so you said four right yeah and we only use two at this time? Three. Three? This, with, with a fourth, <clears throat> that'll get us to 75,000 residents. Okay. <clears throat> based on E911. All right, so we've got time. We've got time. I just don't want to turn around and find out people are on top of each other before we finish. We got this huge building. I want to make sure that there's elbow room, I guess. Yeah, no, we, we plan for, for good uh, uh, growth in that area as well. And everything everything in that room is built on um, raised access flooring, too, so it's easily reconfigurable. <coughs> good. And then um, I was seeing white furniture. They picked out white furniture? No. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. You went through was that. Was that, was that in the... Uh, oh, right. Yeah. No, these are... These are rendering. Th this is this is the furniture, but the finishes haven't been selected yet. Oh, so I these see. are just generic finishes that come with, you know, their renderings that they that they do. I just thought it was lovely, but, you know, I just can't imagine how long it would look like that. Other questions? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Matt, just on the on the two bids, why were they separated like that? They seem like similar furniture, but two different bids. Mm. Can you explain that? Yeah, they were they were. Um, they were slightly different sets of, of furniture sort of categories with, within the entire <laughs> bid, bid themselves. So, um. so, so the requirement for one set was higher or a higher standard than the other. Is that no? What? They were they were there were different types of furniture type system. Like one was was private office workstations. One was open office workstations. If you were to look at the the big piece of the two packages, yeah. In both, and and we couldn't get everything that the department wanted. Mm -hmm with a single bid package. One vendor didn't supply everything that would have met their needs. And so we were able to break out those those sort of categories of furniture work and, and bid them separately so that we would have more competition and the ability to sort of pick and choose a little bit better and get, get that better, that diversity that the department was looking for. 
Um, I do have a question. I have one while you're oh, thinking. Good. Um, so if you look at just the deputy chief's office, because that's what I think that one is up there, how many computers <coughs> will the deputy chief have? Well, in his office, I would assume he's going to have one computer and a couple monitors. Yeah, one computer, a laptop, and two more, monitors. <coughs> so more monitors, room for more monitors. That's what I was getting at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I remember now. Um, on, on the package packages we got sent out, there was a separate PDF for the, for the chief's furniture. Mm -hmm. has, that, has that been picked? Is that part of one of these numbers? It, it's there's there's a yeah there's there's a there's a piece in there for that it's just it's just a, a configuration that just needs to get selected right, okay. there was a little bit of late <coughs> back and forth on that okay um so, no, correct me if i'm wrong and i'm not going to get these numbers exactly right but the furniture budget number was like 730 or something like that 730,000 okay these two what? Go ahead, keep going. Just roughly. These two um, um, bids were about 600000 Okay. So w what's left that needs to be bought under that part? Or is that your part? We're getting there. Okay. Okay. Patience. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's sad to know. We're just bouncing back and forth. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyone else? No? No question? You should have gone first. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now you? Okay. And no, is it, is it you next? If you're ready, I'm ready. All right. Let's go. So uh, in addition to the um, furniture spread out through the station, we've been um, in contact with, uh, we can start with, we'll start with the dispatch office. That's probably the cleanest. Um, we've been working with, um, uh, Representative uh, W.H. Hendrickson, W.A. Hendrickson, excuse me, um, who reps Watson Consoles. Watson is a, a premier dispatch furniture provider. Um, they're a nationwide company. I think we've done six stations with them so far. Um, and uh, they were the basis of design for the dispatch consoles that are shown in your package as well as what's been carried in the schematic from from the days since schematic design they, they've been the basis um, they're not just a desk they're they're actually fairly technical they have um, uh, under desk storage units for up to eight different computers that power the, the desktop equipment the dispatchers use. It's five located across the tech bridge in the front and three in the side return unit. Um, they contain uh, a sit-stand function that's motorized, it's electrical. Um, all of the technology cabinets are conditioned spaces in that they're fan-cooled to help provide uh, some relief to the CPUs so they don't overheat inside the furniture. Um, everything is concealed. All the wires are managed. Um, the, the desktop, as I said, it, it goes sit-stand uh, electrically and then manually in and out for different configurations for people's comfort. Um, yeah, not, not just an average desk. <laughs> Um, but there again, there are four stations um, that are located within the space, and we are asking for um, authorization to execute their um, purchase order. Excuse me, in the amount of ninety four ninety five thousand nine hundred ninety four dollars and seventy five cents. I'll just note for the record, they do have a seventeen week lead time, and they're shipped direct from the factory. So I'd like to get them ordered before the first of July. Okay. But before we decide that, sure. that part of the 730? It will be part of or the overall. Is this, separate, is this separate from the furniture? It has nothing to do with the two furniture bids. It's a separate purchase order. It's under the line item dispatch no. console. Okay, that, that, 505000 Yeah, I thought, I think you and I had talked about that yeah. this afternoon. Okay, yeah. so just 
before we get into that. Yep. So are you going to get into what's left, what we have left to buy on the furniture? Or did we, we have more to buy on the furniture package, yes, right? Yes, we do. Okay. So are you going to get to that? Yep. Okay. So I promise. You, do you, what? I promise. Okay. So you want us to act on this now? We can do it now. Or we can do it all at once at okay. the end. All right. I think no we should choice. probably just take it all in. And yeah. Okay. Do it at the all right. End. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Um, second package, um, we'll do the appliances. Yep. Um, so we did this. Uh, we utilize. I'm sorry. One other point on the dispatch furniture that is through a federal purchase agreement. Um, it's the where is it? NCPA contract which is a national um, federal purchasing available to municipalities. The state sees it as an equivalent to the state contract. So, okay. That's, that so it's the, like you didn't really, method. you didn't need to go out to bid it. That's correct. Okay. <clears throat> it's already been done. It's already yes. been bid. Okay. Yep. It's been pre-vetted. Yep. Um, the appliances, um, this will be, <coughs> this will be an item uh, mode that falls under the uh, per the purchase of the furniture and equipment line item. Okay. Um, this we did through uh, three uh, requested three quotes based on a written scope of services. We provided the model numbers of all of the um, basis of design appliances to three different furniture vendors, two of which provided quotes, and then we negotiated um, to get the best price. Uh, we did do some product substitution based on material availability, um, discontinued models, et cetera, which is fairly common when you're buying appliances. Um, uh, we did settle with a firm, Manny's TV and Appliance. I think they have an office in Lemonster and another in um, Hatfield out in the western part of the state. And the total requested amount for that is $30,918. Are they on the state contract? It is not. It is not under state contract. Okay. Okay. You, and you, oh, we talked last week. You and I were talking with Keith. You got you. You all went through this, so you're comfortable with yep. what you got, right? Yep. Okay. Any other questions, Donna? So you got Manny down as low as you could get him. Yes. <laughs> If you bought this stuff two years ago, it probably would have been a lot cheaper, right? I, I have Not to really. be honest with you, Mo. I don't yes. shop for appliances every day. Appliances, prices of appliances went through the roof in the past two years. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing you do about it. It's just you can't control COVID. The, the, the pricing that we received from Manny's, the, uh, one of the other vendors was Barron's major yep. appliances. Um, they were both very competitive. They yep. were literally within a couple of hundred dollars of each other. So I think we got yep. very fair and competitive uh, I'm pricing. sure we did, but I just know overall appliances went up. So if I'm reading this right, sorry. Yes. You have three microwaves? Yes. Those Ooh. prices look decent. Two upstairs and one in dispatch. Yeah, they, the prices look decent. I'm just trying to see things that I'm familiar with right now to be able to even judge because I was just buying appliances. That's why. I'm so, how many refrigerators? Quite a few. There's one in yeah. there's one in dispatch, two in the break room upstairs for employees, and um, one in evidence. I think that's and whoa, and then a small under counter refrigerator in the training room. Oh, good. So, good question to the chief. The one in evidence, do you have to monitor the temperature of that? Did you have to get one with specific monitoring? Yeah, that would be temperature control. Um, no. The refrigerator, do you have to have something that tells you um, no. that the temperature was maintained within a certain certain degrees within a 24-hour period and all that? Do you well, need that for your evidence? It's going to have digital, right? It'll, it has a... It has a thermostat adjustment but I don't believe it's monitored. not the monitor uh, I just wondered if the state has gotten it because they're going to turn around and tell you that probably someday in the not yeah, they so haven't, far out future. haven't made a requirement as yeah. of yet yeah you're thinking medicine right well I'm thinking medicine and I just think of medicine evidence yeah 
at some point they're going to get to you because they're still getting to hospitals about that stuff. We used to just put a dime in to see if the dime fell through the ice cube and we knew it didn't work, right? <laughs> now they made it made hospitals get much more sophisticated than that. <laughs> so I figure they're going to do it to evidence too, is all I'm getting at. Anything that needs to be stored in the fridge, we don't keep on. <coughs> we transfer it the next day. Oh, that's good. Yep. Good. Okay. Last item is um, what I'm calling maintenance equipment number one, because I'm sure there's going to be more to follow. Um, these were requests that were made through facilities for um, <coughs> electric tools and snow removal equipment from Boston Lawnmower. That was um, an assortment of steel cordless lawn care and maintenance equipment, edger, hedge trimmer, uh, handheld blower, and a walk behind lawnmower, all electric battery operated, and then a second. Um, or a, and then separately, an Aries Deluxe uh, walk behind snowblower, 30 inch. In addition to that, there was a request for um, a utility tractor and related attachments, which would include a large mowing deck, a two stage snowblower, and a front blade for the attachment. And then lastly, a single person maintenance lift. Um, again, I apologize for the description, that's an error. And this is to provide um, safe access for maintenance staff to change lights and whatnot, uh, mostly on the second floor in the in the main area, right underneath the um, detectors. What's the right word to use for that? The cupola. light, daylight up top. Sorry, sorry. Cupola. The cupola. Thank you. Oh, it is. Okay. I yeah. I wondered what you call that too. Cupola. Yeah. I guess. Um. Just, just so everybody knows, um, there's a typo here. It'll be fixed. Um, where it says maintenance lift, and underneath it, it says a John Deere subcompact tractor. Obviously, it's not. It'll get fixed. It just it was a cut and paste error. It'll get. It'll. It'll be. It'll be corrected. Right. Uh, um, Chief, will all this equipment stay at the police station? Yes. Yes, it should. Yeah. Every so in other words, the stuff's not going to, you, you're going to be able to have someone go and get <coughs> this when they need it and not have to go around town trying to find it, right? I'll be at the police station. Yeah, there's a garage space for it. Yep. I, so I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, these, this stuff is, looks like most of it's battery operated. Yes. Are they all the same battery size? Yes. How many extra batteries do you get? I believe one. One. I think it's one on the charger and one on the equipment. I can, I can verify that with Keith. I honestly, I didn't put the quote together, so. Um, I don't know if it makes that much difference in the scheme of things, but having cordless stuff, <laughs> I think one extra one. I know, do these come with the batteries? Like when, uh, in the, There says, in the purchase order, there's mm. like, Four batteries with one of them, two batteries with another one. Where does it say that? Ask. So on the second page. I got page one of one. Yep, one of one. Yeah. So the fourth from the bottom says AP 300 battery, four of them. And then. What? Right here. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but that's one for each unit. And then if you go five from, or four from the top, AI 500 high speed. Which I think might be a battery. Um, I don't think so. Um, okay. I, did Keith work on this? Yep, we can get with him when he gets back. I'm sure he knows, but um, you, you learn the hard way when you're buying cordless batteries, and there's amp hours with them, and sometimes the ones that you get with the tool have low amp hours and they don't last. It's kind of like when you buy a car and you get the 30,000 mile tires instead of the 70s. Um, so you, then you end up buying the batteries and they cost more than the tool. I would just make sure he's got enough um, because there's nothing more frustrating than not being able to finish something when you don't have enough. Um, so probably better to conclude them in this bid. 
Mm -hmm. The difference, because batteries aren't cheap. Right. Okay. But that's all I got. That's it. Um, does anybody? Yeah. Um, so on this, the, where does this bring us up? This is coming out of FF&E. Yes. This equipment, and where does that bring us for a total? I don't have it total. To it's you. these three things you just talked yeah. about are part of FF&E. Not the dispatch furniture. Yeah. Not the dispatch. Right. The dispatch okay. comes off a separate line item. All right. So how much was maintenance? So the two, two bid packages and the equipment 30, would be thirty for the tractor. Another. The total 15. for FF&E. Thirty. And then 31 for the appliances. <coughs> About 75,000 <000 coughs> plus the furniture. Plus the furniture, which was six. Yeah. You're still under the budget. So. All right, so when you buy, when these things are bought, so these two plus the furniture. Right, so I've, I've got. On my on my budget update, I've got eight hundred five thousand identified under furniture, <coughs> which will be furniture and loose equipment. So within that eight hundred and five, we have the six hundred plus for furniture, the other seventy five that we just talked about for loose equipment and other maintenance equipment, and there'll be another seventy five after that. That we have not yet identified. Probably going to be fitness equipment. Off oh, the top that'll of my come head. out of this too. That'll come out of that as well. So okay. the one the one thing I want to just sort of overarching comment to caution the committee. When we budgeted all of this, we did this in the absence of quotes. We hadn't gone out. This was sort of based on historical. So so we have one point six six million dollars in the FF and E line item. That's for furniture dispatch equipment, phones, and technology. So I'm, I'm gonna ask for a little bit of latitude in terms of moving items within FF&E to balance the budget as we go forward. We may not spend all the money for the dispatch consoles and the monitors, but we may go over the $800,000 for things that aren't dispatch consoles or monitors. But we're, gonna, we're probably gonna stay within that $1.6 million number as we move forward. If for any reason it looks like we're gonna go over there, then we will certainly come back and ask for an appropriation for motors contingency to cover any shortfall we have in the FF&E. Before you're ready to put the order in. For sure. Okay. What was the 805 you were talking about? I, I don't have Yeah, In my budget spreadsheet, Neil, from May 13th, yeah. the, the furniture line item under FF&E is seven hundred and thirty thousand five hundred. So I don't know if I have the wrong amount on my spreadsheet. I'll go. I'll we go can back. always double check it. Yeah, I'll take time. a look at it. The total number for FF and E though is one point six. Yes. Yes. One point six six. So then, so for the total, you got the furniture. The furniture is. There's nothing else to buy on that, right? Is there it? may be changes, right? Based no, there might be some changes, but it's essentially the furniture will be ordered. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then you got the appliances. Yes. And then you got yes. the equipment. There are, more, there, are, there are definitely more things that we have not yet bought. I guarantee it. Well, okay. And then there's the a, exercise I equipment. I believe that there's a lift. A what? That, uh, an equip, uh, a vehicle lift. That's supposed to go out into the apparatus space. We haven't oh. we haven't purchased that yet. That's under FF. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's, so, so, Mr. Chair, my, my that's going to be. I, I guess my point is, this is great equipment to have. I understand the lift interior for the building, maybe a snowblower, but I I don't know what the con the town does for a contractor if they have their own maintenance for lawn maintenance and and equipment and things like that. It to me, it just seems like a lot of. You know, thirty thousand dollars for a tractor to to mow just the police station. It, it isn't just for the police station; it's for the entire, entire campus. Site. The entire campus. This this campus it's here. Campus. Yeah, and and they they clean the side. They we the trucks clean the parking lots, but the sidewalks and all of that. Okay. Cleaned by the maintenance staff. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So uh, and I get I get I get. Yeah, it isn't just. For, yeah, yeah, I would say. Would yeah. be crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Okay. 
Um, I, I'm just concerned right now that you know with these other items being purchased and there could be change orders with the with the furniture if fabric doesn't come in right or they need a different fabric that you know we might be looking at a little bit more money down. I the think road. we always had envisioned a vehicle lift, the maintenance equipment, yep. the lift, it, everything was envisioned in the initial bidding right. in the right. additional Forget estimate. About okay. Yes. I just have one question when you said the material. Is it washable material? Yes. Yeah, I think I think most of the fabrics Nothing's uh, are, worse having fabric tears that you can't clean right Yeah, now. I think I think most of the fabric in, in that we put together in the package is bleach cleanable too. This should be a thought about it. Just wanted to make sure that I didn't slip in the lower price one and then you go to pick what you want and it it killed. Um, is there anything else? Okay, so then what do you need right now? I think the request was to um, have, uh, allow the town manager to enter into agreements on all those items to move okay. forward these with three. the orders. Do you want, yes. well, it isn't just these three, it's, it's the furniture. Two furniture contracts and the three <laughs> Items that we brought forward. So it's the five F and yep. five F F and E contracts. Yes. Right. So um, can we do it, Kristen, as um, a motion to approve the five F F and E contracts as presented? If the committee desires to vote on it as one item, we can definitely do that. Well, we can do it individually, but I mean, we can just do it as presented, right? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the five FF and E contracts and um, give the town manager the signal to enter into the appropriate contracts. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Anything none? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Next item, um, free trimming. You're going to do that? I can do that, sure. So um, in your Google Drive, there is a memo from uh, Keith Baldinger to the committee. Um, he has been reviewing the um, health and the condition of the trees in the area between the two new police station driveways. Um, and it's been noted that several of the limbs uh, may be dead or dying. Uh, and an, uh, an arborist has been out to review that work. Um, we feel that now is the appropriate time to go out and Ryan can give the construction reason of why if I can't answer your questions. Um, that approximate value of work is $3,500. This is above and beyond anything that we had budgeted for. Um, so my understanding that it would be coming out of owner's contingency fund. So we wanted to bring this to the committee for your uh, review and um, approval if, you see if we see necessary. Um, so happy to try to answer any <coughs> questions. Ryan can also answer anything I can't. But um, we said that this is a good time to do that. Um, if the committee does approve this, we would have the contractor be coming out next uh, this Friday to, to be doing the work. Well, the, and the reason we want to do it now is because it would, it's pretty rough out there. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to damage anything. Correct. Uh, okay. And there are some, <laughs> I saw a couple of big pretty sick branches out there if they're not dead. Donna? Uh, who's the contractor? I think this was a marquee who we use on the town side. Okay. And it seemed pretty self-explanatory when we got it, so I move we approve. And I agree. It says it becomes a safety issue. Some of those it's the ranches, when they fall down, they're like spikes. Um, I have a second. 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 Okay. Any further discussion? If none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Item eight, discuss the town hall feasibility study. Is that you, Matt? Sure. Yeah, I'll just touch on it real uh, briefly. Um, <clears throat> it's it's a work in progress at the moment. Um, we had a, an initial meeting um, with Kristen and Keith, uh, myself and, and Jeff McElroy from my office um, uh, a couple of weeks ago just to go over some initial um, site test fit concepts and um, the revised programming based on updates um, as a result of 
revised staffing um, levels. Uh, so we so we've gone back and, and updated the program, did those initial test fits, and then we just had a meeting just to go over those initial test fits and the program. Um, we weren't fully in alignment just yet, so um, we're we're making those revisions right now and and are looking forward to having an update uh, at the next committee meeting. So you got updates on any requirements for the school committee, uh, school department? Yep, and SELCO. And SELCO, mm -hmm. okay. And we already have whatever eyes are, we know what eyes are. Every, all departments were asked to update them. So we did some updating and then we were back and forth on the phone last week with um, reviewing of conference space and as well as <coughs> reviewing of the changes that were requested. So I think Tecton's well on their way of now that they have the final numbers from us, that they'll be able to start preparing uh, some concepts. Okay. Storage, conference space. Make sure we got it. Yep. No, we, we honed in on that quite a bit the other day. Especially storage. Oh, conference we need really bad, but <laughs> if you don't have any place to store anything, <laughs> the conference space will be storage. Um, anyway. <laughs> okay. Any questions on that? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, any other business? Nope. Okay. Um, meeting schedule, July 18th, still good? Okay. Yep. And do we have an end of, did we say we have an end of June site loss? Is that true? Or well, we're going to, we'll work it out. Okay. Right. And then we'll let, we'll let the committee know. All right. All right. <coughs> That's the target. Because then we'll get into vacations, and as soon as we do that, half the people won't be able to show up. So. All right. Anything else? We're good. Kristen, we're good. I'll second. make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Okay. Sorry. Motions. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. So voted. Thank you.